the RB corridor is still a hot spot? That's the first question. And the second question is, what is Arlington doing to fix that vacancy rate? Yes, so, um, you know, in terms of, you know, is it still a hot spot? I'd say yes. Um, and in terms of what we're doing, there, there are a couple of um, very significant things that we're doing. First of all, one of the reasons the vacancy rate was rising so fast is that Arlington really did not have an overall strategy. Um, and that was one of the things that I helped um, bring to the table. And that strategy included, you know, taking advantage of the assets that are in Arlington, like um, the Consumer Electronics Association, which is now the Consumer Technology Association, um, and actually using their 170,000 person event out in Las Vegas to actually market Arlington. Um, and we're now um, jointly working with them um, in Shanghai, and they're international. They have an Asia um, show now. But actually looking at the assets there and, and leveraging them, looking at the, some of the liabilities like Boston Quarter, I have to tell you the first time I walked, I don't know if anybody's ever been to the Boston Mall, that thing. I, I apologize if you're an Arlington resident, but you know I'm telling the truth. It's a little truth telling here. I walked around in that mall and somebody was following me, okay? That should not happen in the suburb. I was, I just, I was stymied. I said, what is going on? And what was going on is that they allowed it to decline. And you know, organiz I mean, you know, developments like Mosaic and even urban, I mean, even the um, Union Market in D.C. were totally drawing market share away from them. So um, we basically sat down with Forest City. They wanted to redevelop it, um, but they needed some help, and we put together a $50 million TIF. Um, with, along with their $250 million investment, and now it's um, being redeveloped, it's under construction, it should be completed in, in 24 months. That's going to transform that entire environment for all of those employees and for everyone within a mile and a half to three miles of that location. Um, because it'll give them a series of choices, more updated, um, more entertainment related, more food related, um, more outdoor open mall, not the old fashioned, you know, scary malls that we all grew up in. <laughs> At least I did. But, but, but changing, changing that and then executing a strategy. And let me just tell you, we've been blocking and tackling. We are going after, we will go after a 3,000 square foot tenant, a 1,000 square foot tenant. We actually got the governor of the state of Virginia to come out to, to <laughs> do the ribbon cutting on a 1,000 square foot tenant that had six employees. Now, how do you do that? Well, one of the things is you believe in what you're doing. And this is what we're focused on. Ed tech, med tech, clean tech, big data analytics, and cybersecurity. Those are our growth areas. If you got a company that's doing any of those activities, you need to talk to us. We have the workforce for them. We have the location for them. Sorry, I kicked in the sales. We, we won't do any that slipped. Yeah, that right, slipped. Right, I apologize. Right. Right. We won't do any blocking and talking, but I have a program called MOVE, M-O-V-E. <laughs> And, and it, it provides money. I won't tackle you. I won't block you. We have some resources to help you stay or to come to Montgomery County. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can use mine. I was going to say, Director Hoskins, I don't, the only thing you didn't mention were your universities and... Oh, well, you know, I didn't want to go into keep that. Going on that so you keep going. That was great. Thank you. Very good. I have to share. We can share. Executive Baker, would you like to add to that? You know, other than the fact that I'm going to keep Victor away from all of you. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, now you know why we, we, we hired Victor for a while, and, and we were scared when he left. Um, you know, we're very excited. I mean, he's doing some great things over in Arlington, and as, as well as County Executive Leggett in, in uh, Montgomery County. One of the things, I mean, and, and, and they both noticed, you know, Prince George's County came late to the uh, economic development show. Um, but when we came, we came like gangbusters. Uh, five years ago, you know, I don't think anybody would have thought the type of growth you've seen in Prince George's County would have happened. Um, and here he is a little five years later, you look at when we talk about the Route 1 corridor, which is difficult to get into D.C. right now, um, and we're going to make it difficult to get into Prince George's County because there's going to be as, tr as much traffic as I got here. But look what, well, look what was happening around University of Maryland. <coughs> you know, a, a, a top flight university, but they really didn't have a college feel. You're getting a new hotel and a conference center there. That's the universities. That's right there on Route 1. Um, you're going to, if you come down Route 1, you look at Riverdale, where there's going to be the Kfritz development, which is the first Whole Foods for Prince George's County. It's a mixed-use development with a hotel coming. You come further down to where, you know, uh, you go to where the, uh, if you went to University of Maryland, you know Plato's Diner. So really, my, my kids love it. Uh, it ain't there no more. Sorry. But, 
a new development that Bazzuto is doing is going to go right there. Then you come down to um, our arts district in Hyattsville, which is booming anyway. And to add to that boom, we're going to take it all the way to the district line, which was something we talked about. In Mount Rainier, we're going to do a development in Mount Rainier in the arts district. But what we've done differently is we have strategically and consistently gone after developments in areas that we think are hot. Um, and so we did it with purpose. We also did it with using our redevelopment authority and our revenue authority to act as uh, conduits. And we also put, you know, 50, 50 million dollar economic development incentive fund on the table in the very beginning of the administration to attract. I, I was wondering how long it take to get to the 50 million dollars. <laughs> well, well, Executive Baker, first and foremost, it's an honor to have you here. So thank you. And um, I know you have your uh, detention slip that you'll give to me for showing up late. <laughs> I'll get you out of jug later on this thank afternoon, you. so don't you worry. Yeah, sure. I'm not sure if you've seen, if, if you haven't, you probably need to watch it. There's a, a very effective commercial, you're talking about economic development, attracting and retaining businesses in these corridors, from New York. Have you seen that commercial that talks about the incentives and inviting people to New York? They did a very effective job on it. When I first saw the commercial, my assumption was that they were providing prime land in downtown Manhattan. Uh, but when you look at it and the details of it, it's in other areas throughout the state of New York. But they've, they've, they've packaged this very well. But it, it, it suggests something that I think all of us need to be aware of, that we are no longer competing just within our individual quarters, within our counties, our cities, or what have you but we're competing regionally and up and down the entire East Coast that impacts a great deal of what we've talked about. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, e Executive Baker, uh, for whatever reason, when I was asking a lot of questions to people in the audience, people at my company and around the area, for some reason they kept bringing up Prince George's County. So I have more questions for you than anybody, but I'll, <laughs> I'll cut it short here. Um, but what, uh, the first question for you Executive Baker is, what will the impact of the Purple Line be on the Route 1 corridor? It's going to have a, a tremendous impact on the Route 1 corridor. Now you talk about the two projects that um, I mentioned, where is the conference and hotel uh, that David Hillman is building on Route 1. That's going to have an impact with, with the Purple Line. Also, even uh, Riverdale a Station, that the KFRS project, uh, M Square, which is right near the trail, is, is going to have that. It's going to allow us to, um, you know, to expand the business opportunities, not just on the route, for the, for the Route 1 corridor, going all the way and having the impact that County Executive Legate just talked about, and that is to connect us with uh, Montgomery County, with the Purple Line, but also give us the potential for those businesses located and the innovation that's going to come out of the University of Maryland and the other universities we have to actually connect with Fort Meade and go after some of the cybersecurity stuff that's a nationwide um, you know, impact on us. So it's very important to, um, uh, to us in Prince George's County, to Montgomery County, but also to Howard County, to Anne Arundel County, and even over in Virginia, because we're going to be able to connect each other around here. So it's going to have a tremendous impact. Absolutely. And, and to um, add to that, uh, you, you led into this well. What has the county, as well as other actors, done to promote growth in the area? I mean, the first thing, the first thing we did, and I talk about this, the, the, the $50 million economic development fund, and the reason is we wanted businesses to know, you know, it's not just enough to say you're open for business. You know, you got to show that. People have heard that before. And so when we were willing to put skin in the game on these developments, uh, it showed people we were serious. The other thing is we didn't, sometimes we didn't just wait for developers to come to us and say, hey, you know, we want to go into this area, let's say like the Mount Rainier area. We were proactive, using all the tools that we had at our disposal, using the tools from our redevelopment authority and our revenue authority to go in and say, well, you know what, we may act in some areas as master builders uh, to go in and to spur it. But we also made sure that we were using streamlining. So if you came in and you told us you want to do a project in Prince George's County, and it's in our high area, we, we went and made sure that we redevelop our permitting process so you can get in, get your permits, and faster. And we were willing to go in with you to the state and to local governments. Very well said. And I will tell you, I, I, I 
can't tell you how many people have said to me just over the last two weeks when bringing up County Executive Baker, the words that come out of their mouth is proactive. So when you just said proactive, I was like, wow, I keep hearing that and it's great to hear about Prince George's. So with that being said, what do you see as the potential for the corridor going forward and where are the opportunities? You know, I think the opportunities are really all along the corridor. We kind of tend to uh, focus right now on the corridor, uh, Route 1 corridor going from um, College Park all the way down to the district line. Our philosophy of this administration is, you know, we got a great project that's been, that kicked off in Laurel that the Gibbons, uh, Greenberg Gibbons um, uh, did there where they redid the Laurel Mall and brought in the first Harris, Harris Teeter to the county. We're coming down there, but the idea is from Laurel, you know, all the way down to not just the line in Prince George's County, but how do we connect it with the District of Columbia? So our notion where the opportunities are first, Mount Rainier, the Brentwood area, those are great areas to look at and invest in. Um, but we're also going to team up with the district to make sure there's a seamless uh, development of the arts through Rhode Island Metro Station all the way up to College Park all the way up to Laurel. It's great, thank you. Uh, I have one more question for each one of these gentlemen. And uh, all three of you uh, have focused on best in class. Uh, you want what's the, the greatest for your counties and, and we all appreciate that. And uh, you all are uh, very well world traveled. Uh, you've gone around and you've, you've gone to China, you've gone to different places. Hey, how are they doing it? Why are they successful? How can we do it back in our county? So with that being said, and I'd like to start with uh, County Executive um, uh, Leggett on this. If you could wave a magic wand and change one thing about your county, what would it be? Other than bringing National Harbor to Montgomery County. Oh, I thought, <laughs> I, I thought, I thought you were gonna say, Ditto. other than bringing Director Hoskins over to Montgomery Ditto. County and to help you out. Good. I think waving a magic wand would be something that I think is realistic. And it, it starts with what I stated earlier. That is to solve our transportation challenges within the region. Uh, between uh, the Pike District and Bethesda, uh, I think that there are 31 or 32 projects that have either started or will be in the development stage uh, started within the next 18, two years. 31 projects. That's from the pipe down through Bethesda. That doesn't include going north, Rockfield as well. But much of that can be stymied if we're not able to solve the transportation problem. So if I had a wand to, to wave, it would be that one. Great, very good. <laughs> County Executive Baker. Victor's happy I'm going second. So you can just think about his answer. I, I wanted to let Director <laughs> Hoskins, I was going to make sure he was going to go last on this. Um, you know, I, I agree with Ike about the transportation issue. It wouldn't be the one for me, but I do agree with him. I was actually in Charles County yesterday talking about the transportation issues um, because we're not just developing, you know, the Route 1. The thing we love about Prince George's County is every part of our 100, 500 square miles is being developed. There, there are economic development going on at one time that's never happened before. So we were talking about transportation. But for us in the county, it really is, and this is always, you know, you know, my staff knows what I'm going to say. For us, is education. I mean, we've got the, as he said, we got the greatest location. You've got National Harbor. You have University of Maryland. You're on right next to the District of Columbia. You're not far from Northern Virginia. You're connecting to, to Montgomery County in these hot areas. And people want to come here. We've got, a, we've got an opportunity to get the FBI here. But the public education system, to let people know that there's not only going to be great places to live, to shop, to work, but also to send your children to school. So it says something about it, which is why we've always connected our economic development with our K-12 through education system. If I can wave a magic wand, I'd you know, move our school system up overnight. Well said, thank you. Director Hoskins, you're on. Well, you know, I actually agree with County Executive Leggett. I, we'd like National Harbor, you want to just move? 
but come but, over and spend your money. <laughs> but, but in all honesty, one of the one of the one of my favorite projects that I worked on in the District of Columbia was the Wharf Project, um, which is really giving DC for the first time a huge presence on the water. I mean, um, the the Washington Harbor project is nice, but it's not going to be anywhere near the scale of what's going on at the Wharf. Really. I'm not kidding. I think that's what we need in Arlington. We have all of this riverfront, and we have no presence on it. And it really is not I mean, to be that close to the river and not to be able to get to it except for Roosevelt. And really, you can only walk. You can't. You can't get in a boat. You can't sit down and dine. You, there's just no relationship to the river, and for it to be so close but so far away. And if there's anything that we envy, it, it's that. I mean, it's it's really amazing what you guys have done in National Absolutely. Harbor. Absolutely. Just the last one, because they talked about National Harbor, but I want to, you know, this is a regional effort to, to have economic development, and we all, you know, are rowing in the same, same direction. And it's hard sometimes to step out of your jurisdiction and to help. So we talk a lot about National Harbor, but what really made National Harbor right now and that whole area take off was that we're going to bring um, MGM National Harbor to it. That wouldn't have been possible for us to get done alone in Prince George's County. County Executive Leggett, you know, came and supported that effort when many others around the state were not willing to do it. But what it's allowed us to do with that coming in is it makes Northern Virginia more attractive to development coming. It also makes our partners in D.C. more attractive. And, but it takes the fact that we understand we live in the Washington region. It's our greatest economic tool, and we have to work together. So. We can give Ike Leggett a round of applause. Cause oh, yeah. I, there we go. I, 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 and real, real quick, if I could. Um, please, Peter. Uh, Director Hoskins, County Executive Baker, County Executive Leggett, can't thank you all enough for being here today. We know you're all extremely busy. It's great having three proactive leaders running our area. It's, it's just so reassuring. So we cannot thank you enough. Give these three gentlemen a round of applause, please. Thank you very much. And thank you to Peter Carroccio of Cushman and Wakefield. I want to call up.